Hey guys, welcome back to Amazing Animals Inc. We have a pretty interesting vlog for you today. We just got a new animal and they are critically endangered. And we're gonna talk all about uh, critically endangered animals, why they're so important, why they're protected, and what um, it means to be critically endangered. Okay. International Union for the Conservation of Nature is actually a um, international organization that is in charge of protecting natural resources like animals and plants all over the world and they um, use research and they analyze data and they use education and advocacy to come up with different plans and metrics to classify different animals and um, hope that societies will follow them and protect those animals based on the classifications that they've done. The IUCN Red List provides conservation status to the public about various different endangered species and plants. There are seven different categories in that, from least concern to extinct. Here at the preserve, we have a handful of endangered species like Leela, our lilac-crowned Amazon, Kiwi, our African Grey, and Babs and Bayo, the ringtail lemurs. As of today, there are 6,811 species classified as critically endangered. To be critically endangered, that species has to have a severe population decline with the threat of extinction within the next 10 years. The current extinction crisis that we're witnessing today is happening faster than we've ever seen before. The main cause of extinction is due to habitat loss from climate change, urbanization, and agricultural practices that are just unsustainable. Also, there's a massive amounts of invasive species all over the world. Diseases are spreading faster than we've ever seen. Depletion of natural resources and unsustainable hunting and fishing practices. We just took in our first critically endangered species here at the preserve, so we can't wait to introduce you to her. But first we visited some friends facilities to check out what they have going on and learn more about critically endangered species. At the end, you'll get to meet our newest addition. All right guys, so Kylie and I are heading up to Jacksonville. Uh, we have a very good friend that lives up there. Steven, he has a reptile shop and he also started a um, wildlife preserve at his house, kind of doing a little bit of what we do. And when I was talking to him, uh, he actually has a lot of critically endangered animals. I think it almost surprised him how many he had. Um, so we're gonna head up to Jacksonville and check out some of his um, really cool collection of animals and check out some critically endangered wildlife that he has up in Jacksonville. We're at our friend's facility here in Jacksonville, Florida, where Extreme Exotics Wildlife Foundation, and they have some red and black and white rough lemurs. They're critically endangered, and they're from a small island region in Madagascar, and unfortunately, their homes are being destroyed at an alarming rate. They come from one rainforest region, and unfortunately, through habitat loss, um, the exotic pet trade, uh, animals are actually being eaten by native people, collected to be eaten. Their numbers are so low, they're critically endangered. And we gotta do everything we can to help red rough lemurs. They're such amazing animals. Um, I just, they're so curious. I just love them. They're so fun. They're so inquisitive. Oh, they're one of my favorite species to work with. And yes, critically endangered. Most people all know about lemurs, but most people don't realize how endangered they are and all the perils that they're facing in Madagascar. So it's really, really important to do some research, um, support products that help conservation and that are sustainable and eco-friendly. It really adds up to making a really big difference. All right, so ruffed lemurs live in a pretty widespread range in the rainforest of Madagascar. And they kind of spread out among themselves so they have one of the loudest calls <laughs> of any lemur species. They can be heard for miles throughout the rainforest. And it's kind of cool too, when they breed, they actually are one of the few lemurs that actually make a nest. And they'll have multiple uh, babies in a litter potentially. And they'll actually stay in that nest for a few weeks. So they're underdeveloped than most other species that come out, you know, clinging onto mom. And so they have a very unique uh, social structure compared to most other lemur species. Yeah, that nest makes them very different compared to most of the animals that live on the same island as them. It's crazy how in the same place, different species have um, evolved a little bit differently than one another. 
So I'm Steven Brazil. You're welcome to Extreme Exotics Wildlife Foundation, where we've got a little bit of everything there. We love lemurs. They're one of our favorites. We work a lot with them. Black and white roughs. We have tricolors. We have the red rough girls, these two crazy twisted sisters. We have a boy that we're raising up to go with them, so hopefully we'll be able to produce more of these amazing animals in the future. And lemurs are a great species. I think they're very underrated. I don't think a lot of people have spent a lot of time learning about lemurs, but lemurs are losing their habitat to destruction, and we're probably looking at less than five or six years until there's no lemurs left in the wild because Madagascar is destroying so much of the natural habitat. So what all of us are working for in our conservation status of having some of these lemurs in private captivity is to try to save some of these species and make sure that this conservation of these amazing species lasts so that we can have some of these beautiful animals left in the wild when there's no more rainforest left. So this is Angel, the black and white rough lemur, who's kind of the cousin to the red rough lemurs. There's only two different types of rough lemurs, the red roughs and the black and white roughs. And they're all from Madagascar in that same rainforest region. And they're also critically endangered animals. So it's super important that we protect them. This is one of the largest lemur species. These guys can get over eight pounds full grown. Uh, one of the smallest lemurs is the pygmy lemur that's only just a couple of inches long. So all sorts of different types of lemurs. There's over a hundred species only found on Madagascar. And they're just one of my favorite animals to teach people about and work with myself. <laughs> Oh, these guys. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so this is a blue-throated macaw from Bolivia, and there's only about 350 to 400 left in the wild. They have a small little habitat range, and unfortunately habitat destruction, and native people in Bolivia actually hunt them to make headdresses for their tribal ceremonies. So they are almost extinct in the wild. They are critically endangered, and it's really up to us. We're the only people that can help save them. And there's lots of different programs you can do to help the uh, blue-throated macaws in the wild. And uh, we'll post those in the comments in the, in the description of the video. So he's a male and Steven is actually working with other breeders to get him a girlfriend and he's gonna set him up in a breeding project so that way we get these genetics going because pretty much everyone that has blue-fronted macaws in the Caraman needs to be breeding them because uh, we're the last stop. If these guys go extinct in the wild, um, all the people who have them in captivity are gonna have to start coming together and breeding them and doing reintroduction pro programs. Um, like I said, there's only 350 to 400 left in the wild. That's crazy to think about. So blue-throated macaws are super cool. They actually call them the Houdini of all macaws because blue-throated are extremely intelligent and they can figure out like keys and locks in the way cage is open. So blue throats will sit and analyze everything you're doing to try to figure out how they can get out of the cage and be out and about with you or in the house. So you have to really put like, a, he has a padlock on his cage because he watches you every day when you put that lock on, he looks at you like, oh, I could figure this out. I'm gonna get out of this cage. And when we had him indoors, if we didn't put a lock on his cage, he would come right out with us because he just wanted to see everything that we were doing and interact with all of us. So they're extremely intelligent birds. All right, so this is a pancake tortoise. This guy is really, really cool. This is a critically endangered species from Tanzania and Kenya. And they obviously get the name because they look like a little pancake. And let me tell you guys, holding him, he is really um, almost soft. You're so used to tortoises having such a tough shell, but that's to help him get through all the rocks. So they live in all these rock quarries and literally slide and squeeze between all these rock systems. And so his shell is actually a little bit squishy. I don't know if you can see that. I don't want to do too much to him. Um, but really, really cool species. They are unfortunately endangered because of habitat loss and the pet trade. But really awesome. There's about 500 estimated in zoos, and they think there's more in zoos than there are left in the wild. So this is a Siamese crocodile, and they are native to Indonesia. There's only two to 400 of these guys left in the wild. They are um, in critically endangered due to habitat loss and uh, collection for meat. And unfortunately, people are so afraid of them where they're from. They're thought to be killers and they're thought to um, have evil spirits. So people kill all crocodiles. Um, and unfortunately, uh, this is one of the most endangered crocodile species in the entire world and they are um, super cool. They get about 10 to 13 feet. They're a freshwater crocodile. So very neat species. Very, very cool opportunity to be holding a Siamese. Um, th there's just not that many of them left in the world. There's more in zoos than there are in the wild. And it's just super sad that um, 
it's gotten this far. You know, critically endangered animals, they're, they're, there's really no hope for them left. Zoos are their only hope. So we have to breed these guys. We have to get babies. Um, and we have to think about uh, saving the genetics and the diversity of these guys so that way they're not lost forever. <laughs> are cotton top tamarin. These guys are a critically endangered species only found in the little tiny part of the rainforest in Colombia. A big reason for their decline is because of habitat loss and actually the medical field. Years ago they used to collect these guys for research studies and unfortunately now there are more here in the states than there are left in the wild. There's only about 6,000 cotton top tamarins left in the wild so we are so excited to have Mary Kate join us. She did come to us from another facility where she was an ambassador animal <laughs> and she is doing so well with us and we can't wait to teach people about the issues that they're facing in the wild, ways that we can all help and to really educate the public and give Mary Kate a good uh, retirement home here at Amazing Animals. Thank you guys so much for checking out our vlog today. We hope you enjoyed it. We are so excited to have Mary Kate, the cotton top tamarind here at Amazing Animals. Oh yeah, she is so sweet. We love that we're, we've been able to give her a home here at Amazing Animals, teach you guys all about critically endangered species. I hope you guys learned a lot about what's going on there. We think it's so important to educate people so that hopefully you guys can make better choices and help out. You know, we can all play our role. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Have a great day and go out there and do, do something, something amazing. amazing.